The goal of this video is to give you a better start at mixing. A lot of people that are submitting music for mastering are often overlooking gain staging and their conception of the loudness is often off. And I want to provide some of the most basic tips for mixing that could do a huge difference for people. And, and to do this, I'm going to show you um, how I work a little bit and also how I'm going to be mixing a track from my friend Kike, uh, also known as Enrique. This is a track that he sent me. It's not done. Um, it's not an official mix. And as you can see, the waveform is extremely low. Uh, if I play it, um, you won't be able to hear it right now. Uh, but what we see is that uh, it peaks at almost at minus 20, uh, more or less. So this is like 20 dB that is missing. I can normalize this in my uh, Studio One, which is what I use for mastering. If I normalize this, then I'm, I'm gaining um, like the waveform that I'm missing. But I'm supposed to get the mix at that level, more or less. And if I don't get it, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be boosting. And this can be problematic. First of all, sometimes the clients have like uh, the impression that their song is gigantic after mastering, which is, shouldn't be the case. And sometimes if the people is using some analog gear, then I'm also boosting the noise and I'm also boosting a bunch of different things. So it's not always a good thing. So I'm going to go in, uh, in Ableton. I got the stems from him. We can see that the track is here. And now you can hear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost 20 dB here on the master. And we see that we're at minus 2.5. So, I mean, Sometimes people are saying like, oh, I have to send it to at minus six. Um, it doesn't seem to be matching that. And so what they do, people send me um, a file and they drop this to minus six. This is not going to work because if you have a limiter on the master and you are going to lower this, then the file is going to come with the limiter. So just to show you, I'm going to do uh, a resampling. I'm going to put the limiter here. And I'm going to get uh, a gain, and then you'll see what happens. I'm going to record this in here. So we see that it's pumping. So what people do is they lower the volume at minus six like this. So what happens is this. Look at the waveform. The waveform, well, we can't really see because I didn't record much, but we see that the dynamics are very limited. It's, we see a difference between the lowest point and the loudest. But it's it's like very linear. It's not moving much. And if I lower this, uh, it, it's not going to have much dynamics. So if I record the same thing at minus six like this, but with no limiter, then whoop. <laughs> it'll be better if I do this. So we see that here the file is having a bit more dynamics. Um, there's no squash. There's not. There's nothing that has been clipping or anything. 
that's like proper so people could do this but it's still not the best way to do it the best way is to gently rise all the volumes all the gain all the amplitude of all the the, the different stems here and to control the gain from here which is going to give you a lot of control over what you're doing so for instance in this case uh, if I play again all the stems and I remove this, I am at minus 23. So always use this thing, minus 22 here. So we see that it's at minus uh, 20 here, which is already very low. And what we see here, this is at minus 41, the loudest point. I can't, you know, I only have 60 B here of gain and these like a minus 23, minus 38, minus 21. We don't have much latitude because we only have like 60 B. So you'd be surprised by a lot of people that I work with in mixing. They, they don't get this. They, they, they send me stems and there's like a lot of like lack of loudness so um one thing that i can do is i can look like the 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 average here is minus 20 i would say so i'm gonna get some gain over all the stems here to about 18. so now if i play much better but we see that this is at minus four and this is at zero so Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be coming here and do minus 6.6. 6. And this one minus 25. Uh, this one is going to probably go up minus 4. Point that. I'm going to come here to get more sounds. Okay, as you see, I lowered all the, the, the gain here, and we have a curve that looks like what he has. Um, I suspect that in this project, the, the levels here are really, really low. So when you, when you mix your own music, you want the peak to reach that handle. So for instance, this one, bring here. And I'm going to be coming here and I'm going to add 17. Oh, this one is at minus 6 actually. Ah, start over. Okay, so this is the kick. So it's minus 5.7 and here it's going to be 5.7. So now we see that the this is meeting this and i'm gonna do this for everything uh so these i don't need i'm gonna remove this 
this one. It says here minus 15, so I'm going to put in. I, I went with like the numbers approximately just to speed up the process. It's like people don't realize, but mixing, like a, a good part of the mixing process is adjusting just the level and doing the gain staging properly, which is also what I'm doing in mastering as well. When I do mastering, one of the things that is important is that I first meet the loudness that the genre of the song is supposed to be in. So for instance, a lot of techno, a lot of hip hop is at around minus seven loofs to about minus nine. And that's super loud. That's some of the loudest. EDM can be minus five, minus six, which personally I feel like at that level is just going to be bunkers because you're going to have no, dyna don't, no dynamics whatsoever. And I really honestly don't see the point of that. But that's like a, an engineer point of view. And a lot of people that are into that genre that is very, very loud, they're also very okay with this kind of like aesthetic. Uh, who am I to judge? Uh, there's no wrong or bad, but it's definitely not something that I appreciate. Mostly because what happens is you kill the transients and you need to be playing a lot with the, uh, you know, like muting and bringing back the sound if you want some kind of difference between uh, different sections. And that can be really tricky. So I'm doing this and I'm almost done. Like this. Okay, so now if we play. And now we see like we're way closer to this. So now you're telling me like why why can't i just you know boost this that does the same thing well let's say you want to work on your mix now you have a lot of room to adjust some something like if i come here for instance or that okay here all of a sudden i have all this space to bring it up or down there's a lot of headroom okay And it's also, if I mute something or um, I solo something, I can also see right here the same level. And that's uh, also very useful because you're not guessing if it's at minus 55 and you're here, then you have to boost. You're not really sure where it's at. So if it's here, you know it's, it's going to be minus 10. So if you want to bring that stem to minus 6, then you just bring it to minus 6 and you know it's going to be at minus 6. One thing I like when I see this, it's also since this represents the peak, the loudest point of the stem, we get uh, an idea of like the levels. And now we see that there's a lot of difference in level between this one and this one, for instance. And that can indicate, okay, maybe I want to have more dynamic range. By dynamic range, what I want to do I'm going to show you a lot of people are not understanding what dynamic range is. So they're asking me more dynamics, but sometimes they don't even know what dynamics mean. So so it's the, the difference between the loudest and the lowest point, and it's going to be represented with this blue uh, square here. or uh, roughly around 10. I find that 9, 10 is actually a really good spot to be. This kind of dynamic range sounds really good on vinyl and um, it just breathes and the transcend will have punch, uh, of course, in your mix. If you have clarity, that will help, of course, 
that's something that is always a must but um you can also play with the dynamic range uh, if you want a little bit more difference so for instance uh let's check well i just need to know which is which i didn't do the color coding so that's another thing that i always encourage people to do is to do color coding so that you can see uh better what is what uh, so these two deftones i'm not deftones okay some kind of noise blue uh this is gonna be white I fix white at gray pick red this is yellow that's good yellow as well pigment profit gonna be this snare groove there Tarolas, that's like a X vocal loop. Usually put that in this, and that's the original. Now, if I color code this, And what I like about having all the stems like this is I can easily grab this and let's say I want to lower to minus six, then already better not ideal but it's already better in terms of rendering at the end so some people ask me like uh, oh, but when i mix i can i have louder sound yeah you, you kind of want to have something that grooves and that is louder so you can have uh your loudness set to something that is comfortable honestly i always tell people that if you want to mix your sound with more precision it's important to listen to it at low volume because you will understand and hear everything much better and that's like for a lot of people it seems counterproductive because they feel like louder they hear better but it's actually not true as i covered in other um video before if, if it's louder what happens is you lose perspective of uh, of what's happening uh, it's a curve that's your medicine not an expert in this but i noticed by myself through experience that is very accurate so you know for test driving you can have your limiter here So that's for the mixing 101. I invite you to try this out and give it um, like a bit of time because it might be confusing. You can watch this video a few times if you want. You'll eventually find your way and a way to make this work. And uh, I swear you're going to appreciate this very much once you start working on it. You're going to get your, your music is going to get way more um, consistency. Uh, we could we can look into a uh, future tutorial on how to mix clean and get clarity on masking. All these things are essential for a quality mix. Um, but I wanted to start with this because this is the basis of mix. There's other things, but to me, this is like where it should all start. By the way, while I'm at it, um, I wanted to say that 
I'm coaching on Patreon now. Um, I have a pa uh, I have a page. You can check in the comments. I'm going to link you if you're interested. What we do is for a monthly fee, you can join the group. We do group coaching once a week, and you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching as well through a month. Um, a lot of people that are joining are really enjoying this, and uh, I will get this testimonial one day. But for what people are saying, it's it's nice when you're spending a lot of time alone in the studio to connect with other people that are also facing the same challenges and the same frustration. Together, we find solutions, and also I share my experience. Well, maybe I'll see you there.